I just wanna be myself. Ooh, I don't need no help. Hey y'all, it's T and Marley, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. I know I did my reintroduction about a month ago, and then I kind of fell off the face of the map again, but like I told y'all in that, I have been moving, getting everything settled with Marley, and setting up my office, of course, as you can see in the background. I'll do probably a full office tour at some point in Marley's room, which is also the laundry room, but Marley's room, once we get everything finished everything's not quite finished like I don't have like my purple decorations you're probably like why she got purple on her plum bob and there's no purple in here there's gonna be more purple okay because purple is my favorite color but my couch isn't purple we gotta work with what we got and we're working with it so <laughs> as you can guess by the title today I'm gonna be giving Marley a bath um she is coming out of her heat cycle she just finished the red phase of it and I want to give her a bath and do a full like combing out and all that because she's been wearing a diaper basically non-stop for the past two weeks while she went through that red phase situation. We have carpet so it wasn't feasible to not have her in diapers. When she had her first heat cycle I was in a much smaller space so I could kind of watch her a little bit and I would have the diaper on her just for when she was like running around and then when she had to go pee I would take the diaper off but upstairs downstairs it's a lot bigger space it's a lot more area for her to cover so she had it on basically all the time because it wasn't feasible for me to try and follow her around to see when she was gonna go pee <laughs> so she she was a little she was a little mad at I've done a little bit of brushing to her before I decided hey I should make a video of this since everything's kind of settling down some um but i'm gonna do a full like comb out of her i may use a little bit of detangler and stuff and i'll kind of talk y'all through that process then we're gonna give her a bath and after the bath we're also gonna comb her out with a little bit more detangler and some finishing spray and all that stuff but we're gonna jump to me combing her out and i'll do kind of like a little voiceover of that whole situation and kind of talk y'all through my process of combing her out. Okie dokie, now we're to voiceover tea. As you can see, I bought a grooming table off of Amazon. It was like $80, I think. And it has little loops you have to like put around their neck and around their body. I haven't put, I don't put the body one on yet, but I put it on later. And I know I went over in one of my other videos not to put things around Yorkie's necks because they do have really, really sensitive tracheas and you can cause them to have a tracheal collapse. But I don't really have any other options. They make a harness version, but the harness version is about $50. And this loop version works. As you can see, it's also not tight at all. So she can slip out of it most of the time if she wants to. Like you'll see later that she does. But... I typically just use an aluminum comb, which I'm about to show you. It has a fine tooth end and a wide tooth end. I also use a slicker brush right there for more like difficult knots so I don't have to go in as hard with the comb. And as you can see, she's shaking a little bit and kind of freaking out. She does not like being combed or brushed. So I also have this calm and ointment that I put on her nose and the licking sensation kind of calms her down and everything. I usually try not to put any on her nose at the start when I first get into working on the knots. As you can see, around her tail area was the most difficult section because like I said, she had diapers on for two weeks. There she goes. When she started cutting up, I put the uh, ointment on. And for the most part, she tolerates it. You'll see she tries to bite, not the comb. Like anytime she bends back, she's not actually trying to bite me. She's biting the comb. And when she does make contact with the comb, she kind of looks like, yeah, it's just the comb. And I did leave out here for a second because I forgot to grab her detangling sprays. The main one I use is the Chai for Dogs detangling and finishing spray. But I also use this other one, Wags and Wiggles, that I got from Five Below. And it's a juicy apricot scent. So I saturate her like fur with that after I comb it out because if you put it on when she has like a bunch of knots already, 
it makes them get tighter. Um, it makes the mats and knots like tighter and stuff. Kind of like, you know, if you have kinky curly hair and your hair is straight, once you put some water on it, it's going to curl up. And it's it's a lot easier to detangle initially when it's dry and then you just get it a little wet so you can comb out the knots a little bit better with a little less pain to her. And right around the time she started getting all fiddly with everything, this is around the time I get frustrated. Because, I mean, I love her to death. I'm not going to get angry with her. I'm not going to hit her or nothing. But, like, girl, calm down. It's not that deep. Like, she she be doing the most. And, you know, here we are, combing, combing, combing. You can see hair flying and everything. And I'm working my way up her body some. Just a little bit. She's not really happy about that part. I did go for a walk. And then I do stop to give her lots and love and pets and everything. But we did, we went for like a couple walks. So she did have her harness on. And as you can see, even though I had just combed this section, there's a lot coming out in the slicker brush because it gets a little closer to her skin. I don't really like using just the slicker brush because I don't know. I am not a professional and I don't think I'd be doing the angle right. So I feel like it'd be scratching her skin and I don't want that to happen to her. But she seems to now, initially, she wasn't messing with neither one of them. She was going to give me a hard time regardless. But now it seems like she does a bit better with the brush than the comb. Which either one is good, but y'all see she just slipped out right there. But um, either one works. But she's seeming to do a little bit better with the brush now than the comb. It, but like I said, she, she, she be giving me a hard time either way. Eventually, <laughs> I got to a knot that I just wasn't interested in trying to comb out for her. So I just grabbed the clippers because I keep all her grooming stuff in like a little bin or whatever. So I just grabbed the clippers and shaved out the ones that were super bad. They were right in like, I don't know what to call it, like the crease of her thighs because that's where the diaper would wrap around. And when she was walking and stuff, that's the area that would get the most matted. So because I'm doing a full groom on her in about a week and a half, maybe two weeks, I think I kind of messed my schedule up with her being in heat and everything. Once I get around to it, to doing her full groom, I'll even it out some because I did go a little low on it. Wow, I look like I can't see. <laughs> I promise y'all, I can see. My hair like looks like it was in my face, but I can see what I was doing. And once I shaved out those, I went back to the comb because that's the problem area in general. She really was not messing with me. I had to like, it was a struggle. There were several times when she tried to jump off the table. There's the more common stuff because once she get a little too riled up, I'm like, okay, she needs the common stuff. And once I was done with the back section of her, like, hair, <laughs> and once I was done with the back section of her body is when I put that back loop on. There's more pets and cuddles. And she's so cute. <laughs> um, I was able to hold that one to keep her the front of her body in place. And around this point is when she was like, yeah, nah, you ain't, you ain't messing with my front legs, dog. You ain't doing that. And um, she's really picky about when you can touch her front legs, when you can touch her feet, all that. She's not the most <laughs> feet-oriented dog. But as you can see, she does really good with her like ponytail area. Still struggling with her feet. She does really good with her ponytail being brushed and combed. Because I do that more regular than the rest of her body. And I was trying to use my nails to kind of make it feel like the comb a little bit. But that ain't really, really work how I wanted it to work. But once it kind of got to the point where I was like, she was combed enough for me to want to try and put her in the bathtub. I attempted to do her nails because as y'all saw, she scratched the hell out of my arm in all her struggling. And then... That's when she really showed her behind and was like, nah, baby, you ain't finna do nothing with my nails. You not touching my feet. I'm done with it. And 
yeah, she got herself pretty tangled up. So after that, I was like, F it. In the bath itself, she kind of calms herself down a little bit and I'm able to kind of focus more instead of being frustrated with her. I use this little pop-up like sink thing. It used to have a plug in it and I use it to put her in so she's not able to run across the whole bathtub. And I use a water bottle to kind of douse her with it. I used to have a shower head, but this like a detachable shower head, but this shower doesn't have it here. So I use the water bottle to kind of douse her in the water or whatever. Because it's important for them to be well saturated before you start messing around putting soap on. Because you don't want to put soap on just dry, <laughs> dry fur because it causes it to get gunky and everything. I forgot to grab the soaps. So here I am. She just chilling while I go grab all her hundred million soaps out the cabinet. Now, I told y'all I use 100 million shampoos. But the first one I always try and use is a germ removal shampoo. It washes away germs, odor, dirt, and it also soothes skin. So, I put like a decent amount in my hand. A decent. I don't know what y'all want to call it decent. But I put a decent amount in my hand. And then I put a little bit on her body. And that's when I rub my hands together and I get to going in. I pay special attention to like her booty area <laughs> because that's where germs be. I don't, and I do try and put a lot of it in her like foot pads too because when we go for walks, she's outside, she's touching the grass, everything that's in the grass now ends up in her little paw pads or whatever. So once I get around the shampooing, I make sure I scrub hard enough that I get a good lather going all the way down to her skin make special attention to the most dirty areas and when i'm washing it off i make sure i get all the soap out especially when i have it down deep in her paw pads with this specific germ removal one i want to make sure i get all the soap off so she isn't itchy afterwards which if your dog is itchy after a bath it's probably because you left some soap on which kind of brings me to my next point i use this hemp and lavender soothing shampoo because Sometimes she's just itchy to be itchy. Like I said, I haven't given her a bath in about two and a half weeks. So she's been scratching a lot. I think just because she's used to having a bath a little more frequently. She's like, um, I'm greasy. Mama, come get me. But I use that one to kind of soothe her skin some in case she's a little sensitive and everything. Which is still the same routine. You make sure you scrub, get it nice and into the skin, especially those soothing ones. But you still want to rinse it all the way out to make sure there is none left on her skin because that's not what soap is for. Soap is for getting dirt off the hair, off the skin, not just sitting on the skin. Now, this next shampoo I'm using, it's by Palmer's. I don't know if y'all are familiar with, like, the cocoa butter lotion or whatever. But I figure if Palmer's is a good enough brand for me to use, it should be a good enough brand for my dog to use. And it's also got oatmeal in it in addition to cocoa butter. And I think it's really soothing as well. So, just like with all the other 100 million soaps, you work it in nice and lathery. Once that particular soap is all lathered in on her body and everything, I rinse it off my hands because I'm about to use this other Burt's Bees Tearless Shampoo to wash her face off. Using a washcloth, I don't just rub it straight into her face or anything because even though it's tearless, I don't think it's a good idea to just lather it all up in her eyes if I don't have to. So I use it to get the top of her head, under her chin, where there's like food and everything. And I don't know if y'all have paid attention, but Yorkies get really bad eye boogers. So I kind of wipe them away too. And she usually doesn't struggle too, too much during that part. And again, I, I wash her body off with the water bottle. Y'all can see me singing. <laughs> y'all can see me singing. I was listening to the music the whole time I was doing this. But I make sure I rinse her body off real good. I To rinse off her face, I put it on the washcloth again. I put the water on the washcloth and kind of drizzle it down her face so I don't get too much down her nose. She kind of fights me on it because she's like, why is there? Why are you touching my face? What's, what's near my face? But 
once her face is done and all the soap swashed out, I put conditioner all over her body. I use this one. It's Tropicana Moisturizing. I think it's like kiwi and cocoa butter. And I lather her whole body up with it. Make sure to still get down to the skin. The specific goal of conditioner for me when I put it on Marley is so that it's covering her whole entire body. And as much of her as possible will be soft. So it's supposed to sit for anywhere to, from three to five minutes. So I let it sit on her, I pet her, I rub it in some more. And then by the time I get around to washing it out, it's the same process as it was when I was using the soap. I make sure I get it all out of her body, but I use the washcloth to get it out of her face. And she tolerates it. By this point, she tired of me. And she tolerates it a lot better <laughs> than she tolerated any of the other steps. And I make sure I definitely get it off her face. And then I grab her towel and I wrap her up and make my little Yorkie burrito. And I carry her to the blow dryer. Blow drying her is roughly the same process as combing her out in the beginning, except I'm also blow drying. Um, I still mainly use the comb. I blow dry her on medium to low, low to medium heat. It depends on whether she want to fight me on it. If she started fighting me, I'm like, okay, I'll turn the, <laughs> I'll turn the temperature down. But she's you're pretty good about me drying her body and combing her out. She does a lot better combing her out while I'm blow drying her than she does me combing her out beforehand. As you can see, she's not attempting to bite me as much and I'm not even using her little combing whatever. The few little knots that are left actually comb out a little bit easier because she had that conditioner on. The blow drying and the final comb out is actually the least time consuming part of the whole thing. Yorkies actually take, well, at least mine does. They take a decent amount of time to actually get fully dry. Like she doesn't like me blow drying her face or like the top of her head. So that part I usually just leave kind of damp and let her do whatever she does after I'm done with her body and everything. But it's the least time consuming. It only takes about 20 minutes, I think, in real time for me to get her blow dried and combed out at the end. The bath, like the actual washing of her, that took about 25 minutes in real time. And the initial comb out, because she hadn't been like fully combed in that area for about two weeks, that took the longest coming in at about 30 minutes. But either way, it wasn't a super kind of difficult task. <laughs> Overall, it only took an hour and a half total. I was listening to music the whole time. I would, I could have been texting if I wouldn't have been recording on my phone or anything. I could have been watching a movie, except for the blow drying part, because my blow dryer is super loud. Just in general, for me, I feel a lot better doing this myself than for someone else to be doing this, because I know I'm taking my time, because my dog is always going to be there, versus... I kind of had a bad experience at an actual grooming salon, which is why I wanted to groom myself. I just felt like she wasn't being taken care of the way I would take care of her, which is why I decided to groom myself. For her ponytail, by the way, I just use regular like um, Dollar Tree rubber bands. I don't do nothing fancy for that. And... Like I said, she doesn't like me combing her face at all. She was basically done with me. But she was looking so cute. And I always give her lots of pets and kisses and snuggles after I'm done. Because I know I've tortured her for basically two hours. And here we are with a freshly bathed Marley. She was actually hiding from me downstairs. She take off running as soon as I let her off that grooming table. So... Just so everybody knows, I am not a professional. I don't actually really know what I'm doing. I do a lot of research before I try and do anything myself. But I definitely would lean towards the way of saying I'm an amateur than a professional. But I do like the way I give her baths. And I probably will end up making a video of how I do a full groom. But kind of skip through the whole bath section since y'all know what I did for that. Um... But yeah, it's been real and it's been nice, but it ain't been real nice, but it has. So I appreciate each and every one of y'all for joining me today. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video if you like what you saw. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them in the comment section. 
I'd be around ready to answer anything anybody got to say. And for you negative Nancys that have something negative to say about anything I did in this video, save yourself some time and don't even worry about it because <laughs> I'm not going to respond to it. And if I do, you're not going to like what I have to say. So, yeah, be sure to check out the links to a few of the things I have under the description box. I kind of put the names of the soaps and everything as well as link to my Twitch channel, which I do stream on Twitch five days a week. And you'll catch me a lot more often over there as I mentioned in my last video as well. But yeah, that's gonna do it. Thank y'all for watching my video. Peace. I don't wanna be myself. Ooh, I don't need no help.